In this video, I want to give you guys the exact tools and products I use to basically take a nasty white car that has really hard to remove dirt and turn it into something that looks really, really good again without anything fancy and without anything really too expensive. So as you're looking at the before of this Audi, this was actually an Audi that was shipped to me from Southern California from a client who wanted it detailed in my garage. So that actually happens more and more now as the videos grow and things like that grow. People from literally all around the nation at different times will ship the cars into the studio. So that's what's happening here, but I want to give you guys a quick view of the outside just because this is one of the nastier cars that I've seen in a long time because I normally don't detail cars that are even quite this bad, but you can see, especially because it's white paint, not just all the surface dirt, but a specific type of surface dirt. And the thing that I want to highlight here as we get into the detail is this type of surface dirt is so difficult to remove because it's got these little tiny black spots all over the white paint, all over the glass, and all over the plastic trim. Basically what this is, and this is super common in the summertime, any time you are moving a car outside or particularly moving a car cross country or letting it sit under trees, you've got these white dots and a lot of this is actually what people call honeydew and it's kind of like a little residue from this bug called an aphid. And I've shown this in one or two of my videos before, but this type of dirt sticks and clings to the paint and so car washing is not enough. So to skip the boring stuff, what I'm going to be doing with the wheels, tires, and wheel wells and to highlight the products and tools that I'm using so that you guys know exactly what to do for less money than you're probably spending right now, I'm using Meguiar's wheel and tire cleaner. The reason for that is because I keep it diluted in a five gallon jug in my cabinets and it's really easy for me to fill up my bottles really quickly because I use so much of it. I've got it in a pump sprayer. The reason I got it in the pump sprayer is simply because I use so much of it that it's way easier to use it in a pump sprayer rather than using it in a spray bottle. So I spray it all over the wheels, tires, wheel wells. I wash off the tire sidewalls, wash off the wheels, and wash off the wheel wells. There's a lot of brake dust on the inner barrel of the wheel that is not going to be taken care of with this detail, but that is actually not the point. Now let's go ahead and move to the rinsing and the foaming stage. Now this is just one of the main things I want you to get out of this video. I am using a degreaser in my MTM foam cannon here. And the reason why I'm using a degreaser is because number one, this type of degreaser is actually made for pre-foaming, but I wanna give you guys a couple other products you can use because they work just as well. There's a product from AM Details and it's just their all-purpose cleaner. And that is an all-purpose cleaner that I actually tend to like to use in the same application that I'm using here with this particular, again, pre-foam degreaser. The reason why I'm using a degreaser is obvious. I need extra cleaning power. When you're dealing with a car like this, doing a pre-foam stage in the traditional way with regular pre-foam soap is a total waste of time. I want to, you guys to kind of like try to focus in on the white paint as I'm rinsing it and foaming it. You can see even backed up in the GoPro from this angle, you can see those white dots, especially all over the hood. And so the reason why we have to use a degreaser in a situation like this is because number one, you're not going to harm the paint, but number two, it's the only thing that's going to stir things up enough to justify the time spent using a pre-foam stage like this. So I use a pre-foam stage with a degreaser and I might even slip in a couple other chemicals here and there if I want to that I think might make it a little bit more powerful and I want that degreaser to sit on the paint for as long as possible. Now this car is from California, so literally it was shipped from end to end because I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, so I'm almost on the other end of the country. That being said, I want you guys to also see the fact that this is not foaming up a bunch. In the detailing world, we tend to think the more foam, the better. In some sense, that can be true. In another sense, it is not always true. The reason being is this degreaser is going to outperform most of the foam cannon soaps that anybody uses, no matter how thick those suds from that foam cannon soap uh, are. And so this degreaser, while no, it doesn't foam up very much because I'm not going to be using you know half of my foam cannon worth of degreaser just to get more suds, it is going to be extremely, extremely powerful as it sits on the paint. Before I wash off the foam, I'm going to use my Meguiar's wheel and tire cleaner. I'm going to be spraying the entire front of the kind of black trim grill area, the headlight area, the plastics, and the clear coated areas. And I'm going to be using kind of my detail brush and a microfiber towel for a bug detail. I actually like to spray this on top of the degreaser. I don't like to rinse it off first. I like to go ahead and take care of the bugs while I'm waiting for the degreaser to work on the paint. Now, again, for those of you wondering, is there a cheaper product I can use than a dedicated degreaser for pre-foaming stages? Cause they do tend to be kind of expensive. The answer is yes. You can even use something like Meguiar's all purpose cleaner, but I do like to dilute it around like 20 to one in this application. And there really is um, no kind of like safety, let's just say I've never had any issues with it, but you should use it in an inconspicuous area first. Another thing that I would suggest using for those of you who are kind of freaked out about this, 
PNS Interior Express Cleaner is also something that works very, very, very well, and I tend to use that in a foam cannon, and I don't generally tell people that because it's kind of one of my secret weapons, but it's one of the off-label uses that I like to use for the PNS Interior Express Cleaner. I use it about 10 to 1-ish in a foam cannon, normally on darker, older, more oxidized colored paints, and the reason for that is because it's extremely safe on those areas. But again, as you're looking at the hood, look at those black spots that you can still see as I'm rinsing. This looks like it didn't even touch it, but that's how extreme this type of dirt is. So you really, really have to be uh, cognizant of the types of chemicals you have to use when you're in a situation like this. Now let's skip forward to the agitation wash. Now what I want you guys to see me doing in my agitation wash here is I'm actually having to put a fair amount of pressure on the paint to remove even the surface level residue. The hood shows it best, so this is the kind of the scene that I want you to capture because you can see while in the camera, in the GoPro, it looks like I'm taking care of most of it on the paint. The truth uh, in, in like reality is that there are tiny little speckled black pieces all over the paint still even after me kind of pushing and putting some more pressure on this agitation wash stage. So I'm going to be doing this in the traditional way. I'm just going to be taking the mitt to all parts of the paint, leaving the lower rocker panels for later, and I'll explain what I do in just a second. But I, what I want to highlight here, guys, is that I'm using Meguiar's uh, Hyper Wash in my uh, bucket, okay? So I don't have anything else in there. It's not a wash and wax. It's not a ceramic-based wash. It's just car soap. I like that best in my detailing business. When I'm trying to wash a car, I just want the car soap to do its job. I don't need a bunch of additives or a bunch of protection. I'm not in that stage yet. Now, as I'm doing this, I am not getting caught up in the fact that there are a bunch of little black speckled dots still all over the paint when I'm finished washing. I'm trying to remove as much of the surface dirt as possible and I am putting a lot of pressure but if I cannot get it off I'm not going to sit there and scrub back and forth and scrub back and forth and scrub back and forth because I can do that in another way with a different type of chemical make my life way easier in a stage after the washing so all I want to do here is wash now after I go ahead and rinse everything off the paint I did want to show you guys filling up out of my five gallon bucket here just so you can see this is really something that makes my life so much easier I can just fill it up out of my five gallon drum and then I can go back in I'm using once again McGuire's wheel and tire cleaner diluted five to one for all of the lower rocker panels. For those of you who don't know, I, I kind of call my Meguiar's wheel and tire cleaner my all-purpose cleaner for the exterior. It's a very safe product for paint, for black trim, for tires, wheels, wheel wells, all that sort of stuff. So I like to take it to the lower rocker panels, let it sit for a second, then I'll come in with a soft wash mitt or a microfiber towel even, and I will make sure to get all of the surface dirt off of that area. Now this is very important for anybody who finds themselves in a situation like this. The next stage is not to go around the car and try to to individually take care of each tiny little black dot. What I want to do is take my clay mitt or a clay bar and I want to go ahead and clay the paint. The reason is I'm going from general to specific, okay? So what's happening is I'm putting things in sequential order such that by the time I finish with my detailing sequence, there should be very little left over that I have to take care of additionally with uh, more unique, specific sets of chemicals. So the clay bar is going to naturally take care of, and I'm actually wiping off the lower rocker panels a little bit more uh, extremely here to make sure that I get most of that dirt off that from the Meguiar's wheel and tire cleaner that I sprayed. So you can see me mixing that in a little bit with my clay bar here. But the reason why I want to go ahead and clay mitt and, and just clay the entire paint is because as I take care of the hood, as I take care of the doors, the roof, what's going to happen is I'm going to remove inevitably some of those black dots, some of that aphid residue, some of that road tar from this being moved across the country. So that when I'm done claying, what I have is smooth paint that I can then take something like citral, okay, and if you guys don't know what that is, it's a very industrial grade cleaner, but it works great for um, applications like this. I'm going to be putting some pressure on my clay mitt because I want to make sure that I'm getting everything off the paint, uh, everything as possible at least, but then afterwards, again, I can take my rapid remover, my citral, my dedicated tar remover, whatever it is, to the specific, specific areas that need it. The other thing I would say is this car is a really great example because the hood naturally required way more pressure or way more claying from me than any other part of the car. The roof is also another exception, but the roof and the hood required more than every other area. And basically all of the black dots, all of that aphid residue, all of that tar was removed very easily, kind of in a more normal, quick way from every other area, whether it be the front, the doors, the trunk, but the hood and the roof because they sit horizontally, they sit parallel, let's say, to the sky, so gravity doesn't push things off of them quite as easily. Things sit on them a little bit easier. Those areas required more work. 
What happened by the time I got done with this car is that there were there was some pieces with a bunch of residue on them, but unless we were going to polish it away, it was not going to be taken care of. And when you step back from the paint, you couldn't see it at all. You did have to take a more detailed eye to the paint. So guys, hopefully this helps put some sequential order things to your process. And just so you know, the product I'm using for my clay lube is Optimum No Rinse Diluted, one cap full per 32 ounce spray bottle of distilled water. Now I wanna show you guys the after pictures here. Just just because you'll be able to see that from my washing, my foaming, and my clay barring, and really nothing else, this is before even putting any wax or sealant on the paint, stepped back from the car, it looks absolutely incredible. And this is what the customer sees, right? And this is also what I show the customer in a very detailed way. Hey, here's what's left, here's what's left, here's what's left. Guys, hopefully this was helpful. These products can help you get uh, through really difficult situations, even like this, and they're very, very inexpensive. If you want a full list of products I suggest, check out the YouTube description box below. And as always, from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, remember, a great detailer is always learning, and I'll see you in the next video.